Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody back to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. I'm your host, Andy Burrows, and I'm joined by three illustrious co-hosts today. As always, Mr. Adam Cousins and Dave Robinson. Evening, lads. How are we? Hey, mate. Smack Dave returns again. Smack Dave. Yeah, God, he's got Can't more, get rid honestly, of me now. more nicknames than I've had up dinners. Uh, and the man that helps us out a lot, a hell of a lot, with our, our YouTube and some of our social media uh, content, joining us for a Smackdown review. Uh, Munzee, how are you, mate? Yeah, good. Good. Looking really forward to it. Remember, yeah. it's not Munzee, it's the great month. The great, great man. man, yeah. So I'm, I'm just no, I'm, I'm not. My nickname is no nickname. No, uh, no, no. But obviously, we are here to review uh, this past Friday's <laughs> SmackDown on our weekly lay in the SmackDown show. Uh, Adam, kick us off, my friend. What did you make of this past week on uh, SmackDown? Uh, we all know how it ended, but wow, what a. Uh, we talk all the time, long term uh, storytelling. This bloodline story just gets better and better and better. I, I just just when you think it might be not coming to an end, you know, it's a bit like a roller coaster. There's so many twists and turns to this storyline. Uh, what did you make of SmackDown, mate? I like that actually. It looks like my background because you shows are pointing at me. <laughs> it's like they're poking you in the ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the this this thing. I don't want this thing ever to end. I really, I know it will at some point, but I just, I, I need this every week because again, we'll get into it, twist and then a twist and then we might as well have a third twist and then sets it up. We now know what's happening when we go uh, in, in two weeks uh, to see Money in the Bank uh, and SmackDown. So all in all, I mean, the show as a whole, I, I think was passable other than that. But, uh... Yeah, I think the bloodline bit, I think the thing is with SmackDown now, especially when you advertise Roman Reigns, I'd be interested to get uh, Munzi, your view, and Dave, obviously, in ads. Um, every time you advertise Roman Reigns, you're kind of always waiting for that moment, that next twist in the bloodline storyline. So it kind of takes away from the rest of the show because you're thinking, I just want to get to the bloodline bit. I re And this week, wow. I'm so good. For me, I'm kind of with you, Adam. This week's SmackDown was passable. Mm. It wasn't great. It was nowhere near as bad as some of them have been in the past. Uh, but yeah, for me, all whole episode, I was just like, let's just get to the Roman. They were teasing it and teasing it and teasing it. Munzi, what did you make of uh, what did you make of Friday Night SmackDown, mate? Yeah, I, I saw. I tend to agree, really. Till, till we got to the Roman bit, um, it was yeah. You just basically waiting for Roman to see what the blood, what's happening with the bloodline because it's best being wrestling. I think it's the best being wrestling this year. Or as a whole of the year, do you know what I mean? The bloodline story has been the. It's why everyone chooses the SmackDown more than do Raw, I think, because because of the black uh, black line blood, bloodline. Um, Jesus Christ, that's a, that's a clip, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Bloodline. You've been on the show for five the blood... minutes. You've been on it five yeah. minutes, and you've got us cancelled already. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for the Katie Bryce uh, clip, but that ain't coming yet. Yeah, um, no, I, so... I don't know if I can get a reference in this week. Mark and John. No, we did. Yeah, the, blo yeah, the yeah. bloodline. The bloodline is just like the best in wrestling at the moment, isn't it? So yeah, you are waiting. Soon as Roman's uh, advertised, you're waiting. But oh yeah, what what an ending. Mm. Hey, that... for someone that doesn't like, obviously you're an AEW <laughs> guy, so. For someone to see that, and we, we kind of got it a little bit with the BCC and, and the Elite recently over the last couple of weeks. There's been the we always say these on shows that the ending really makes a difference to whether you watch that show next week. Keen to get your eyes on it from an AEW perspective. Obviously, we'll get into what happened, but when you see Roman Reigns advertised for a show, is it I need to see it? Yeah, uh, to be honest, and I totally agree that he does take away from some of the other wrestlers and segments, even though that's not the intention, I suppose. They want it all to be that good, but the Bloodline story is just head and shoulders above anything else. Uh, in terms of long-term storytelling, possibly ever, because we keep saying this year, in the last few years, in the last 10 years, in the last 20 years, it's, I think it's one of the best storylines of all time at this stage. Um, in terms of SmackDown overall, it was fine. You know, it, it didn't blow me away. Uh, there was a lot of good talent on the show, a lot of good wrestlers featured, you know. So it was it was never going to be a bad show. 
some of the matches were a bit too short for me. Um, uh, that that was kind of a bit of a, a theme throughout the show. And yeah. I also didn't like a couple, of the, a couple of the quick eliminations in the gauntlet match. Yeah. I would rather there have been less teams than more teams that kind of get pinned after 20 seconds. So, but overall, I enjoyed the show and certainly the ending's got me, you know, I'll be there again next week waiting for it because I want, I want to know what happens next with yeah, that story. Just a, just a quick one for all three of you before we move on. Do you, could, we know that this Roman Reigns thing has been written by Roman, Heyman, Hayes and Pierce. These guys are all wrestlers. These guys have been there. These guys, Michael Hayes was fucking doing Bad Street USA in about the 40s, wasn't he? With the fabulous three birds and all of that sort of stuff. Is this the key point that when I think we've mentioned it, Andy, recently on other shows, but I'm keen to get Mondays and Days with you. Mondays, we'll start with you. The fact that these are written by wrestlers that have been there against these Hollywood writers that you seem to have a field day of on Raw, is that a key point to why this is working so well? <clears throat> yeah, because you can see it with NXT, like when Triple H took over and Absol Michaels, they're writing it as well, aren't they? So, yeah. yeah, they just seem to know what to do. But, yeah, as you say, it's been the best. Well, is it? Is this the best storyline since NWO days? Or, you know, no, it's is, it is pre- it's up there, isn't it? Not, probably not one of the best, but it's up, it's up there. And it's for how long it's gone on as well. Um, and with Roman being part time as well, that's you know it's, it, they've done quite a good job. But yeah, I think I think uh, ex wrestlers um, doing it is much better than these Hollywood stars. What do you think, Dave? Are you in agreement with that? Because it, it seems to be like you know even on AEW now we're seeing like Chris Hero was doing some work yeah. on, on Collision and, and Danielson and Dax and Punk and people that have been there week in week out and have done all this stuff. Surely they're f- I mean maybe not necessarily for. The, I suppose you need some creative writing in, in some in, in some aspects, but having these wrestlers do the main bit, it just shows you that it probably works better than having a film full of Hollywood writers. Absolutely. I, I didn't want to bring up AEW, so I'm glad kind of you did. <laughs> um, you, were, you were quite right. You know, they've, uh, particularly for the new show Collision, they've recruited ex-wrestlers to be mm-hmm. part of creative. If we look at it from a, a soccer point of view for over here, uh, all the good players, when they stop playing anymore, you want them to go into coaching and management and stay in the game. So it's exactly the same for me for wrestlers. When they can no longer wrestle anymore um, or they're out injured or, you know, just even if they're active on the roster, like, um, you know, Brian Danielson and, and Roman Reigns, uh, it, it's clear that by using by using them, you're getting really good quality stories that make sense and really good matches. So, yeah, I, I hope it's not a one and done for the WWE. One day this Bloodline storyline will end and they'll move on to new things. But I'm hoping that more stories coming soon and in the future will be like this and they'll make us feel like this, that we just can't wait for the next episode and what's going to happen, what twists and turns coming next, who are they going to introduce to the story, who's going to do what. Yeah, it, it, it's phenomenal. And that does stem from the crew of people that have written the storyline, predominantly wrestlers or ex-wrestlers. Yeah, definitely. Andy, I suppose you're in agreement with that already because we already had this chat. Ah, oh, mate, yeah, you know how I think about it. You know, one good thing, is one quick thing is like the only benefit to Triple H retiring because he can't wrestle anymore is his creative mind can just keep ticking and ticking and ticking even more. And you've got Shawn Michaels on NXT, you know. Any, I, I wouldn't even mind betting that they haven't been bending um, Mark Calloway's ear about a few things. You <laughs> well, know, know that um, AEW got an interest in Walton. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anything like that, and like Dave made the, the, the football reference over here, I mean, if you can keep ex players in the game, like you know, going to co- like you're into coaching and stuff, and it works the same in any industry, any like anything like that, you know, and that's any sport, you know, cricket, rugby, wrestling, anywhere you've got ex pros doing it and teaching and passing it on, you know, that's that's how that for me that make any product better, and that should be in anything in life, you know, you get ex look at during COVID, all the ex nurses that come out and helped and gave their knowledge that they had and put it back into the system. So, yeah, they've really, they've really uh, done well here getting the ex wrestlers involved. Exactly. Right. Gauntlet time. So, SmackDown opened with the 16 gauntlet, um, and the brawling brutes started it and practically finished it, uh, in, in a long ways with, with uh, pretty deadly coming out winners. Um, 
I am a bit in agreement here with, with what Dave said. Uh, smack Dave on your bloody thing. Um, he, they, he's, um, changed, he's only changed. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Is he trying to get? I don't know. Anyway, um, I think they've done the profits dirty on this. Uh, I'm not a fan that they eliminated them straight up pretty quickly. Well, I'm not going to say quickly, but they were eliminated pretty much straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, hit row, you, fuck them off. Seriously, it, 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 it's just ridiculous. What was the point in bringing them back in? Like, yeah. what, what are they going to offer now? What are they just going to come around sing and then get pro kicked and it's over? I mean, it, it, it's fuck's sake. it's um, it's just ridiculous with, with those guys. Um, yeah, just send them back to NXT. Just, you know, it, it, what's the point in anything else uh with that um anyway long story short after a few quick eliminations pretty deadly stole the win and i know you're very happy with this andy they go it against kevin owens and Sami Zayn in london on a smackdown show which is going to be loaded with title matches so come on andy i think it'd be the best one for you to say for us you love pretty deadly don't you yes boy Pretty fuck yeah, oh, mate. Pretty I, get why, I get why they've done it. You know, they're English. There's going to be... Hey, there's an Ignite link into that. There's, yeah, it's Ignite. You know what I mean? Obviously, they've been... They were in Ignite. But for me, no, not a fan. I'd rather the Brutes won it. Um, I don't get it. I hate the gimmick. They're up there with Matt Riddle for me. I'm not... I don't get it. I, maybe... It's probably the gimmick that they've set them up with. And them as wrestlers, I'm sure, are fine. Obviously, I haven't really seen... I don't really see much of them wrestle. They're kind of doing these stupid back stage skits obviously whoever that's where I, maybe ex wrestlers aren't writing their bloody stuff because it's fucking awful it's really is bad um yeah no not for me mate i'd rather you know rather see the brutes again english oh, seamus is irish but over for smackdown uh doing but I, I i kind of enjoyed the match until the ending and then i was mate as soon as i as soon as they won you can kind of guess my feelings i was yeah. Dave, do you think they uh, they eliminated the profits early because of this hill turn coming up, so it's going to start to get them aggravated and stuff like that, ready to when they switch? Yeah, it could definitely play into that. It could definitely play into that. We, from everything I've heard, that uh, they're really high on Montez Ford, and mm -hmm. he's somebody that's tipped to be a really big star. So yeah, it could play into it. But they did pretty much the same thing to Anderson and Gallows. You know, they weren't in it long, uh, and as you say, hit row. So I, I, I never yeah. like that. I never like in Royal Rumbles when somebody's eliminated after ten seconds. I just, I, I just hate those kinds. Don't Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the odd one for co comedy effect. That was like, mm. a, you know, uh, yeah, to add a bit of levity to the show, I suppose, or to to the rumble. But when you've got multiple eliminations quick, I hate that. And if you, again, gauntlet match. How many teams was it? Six teams. Six. Six, yeah. yeah, I'd rather have done four teams and done four proper eliminations or three mm. proper eliminations. Anderson and Gallows are doing fuck all nowadays, either, are they? They're doing nothing. No. They're great. They, they, I love their like their impact run and everything. Again, it, like Dave says on a few shows you've done now, getting lost in the shuffle. Yeah. They're not lost, mate. They haven't. They're in the. They're in the maze. They ain't got a clue how to get out. They yeah. just, you know what I mean? They just don't see them. No. Yeah, it's uh, in terms of the, the winners, pretty deadly. I don't know a great deal about them, um, but willing to give them a, a, a shot. I don't think that was the right way to do it. I'm not sure. I know I know the brutes had been in the match a long time, so you could put it down to that as well. But I I really wanted Seamus and Ridge to win. Do you think uh, you might know more than me on this at, at Money in the Bank? The, the belts will be defended again, or do you think the belts will just be defended on Friday? Because is there, if, is there perhaps going to face pretty deadly on the Friday and Seamus and Ridge on the Saturday? Is that a possibility? Uh, it, well, it is. I mean, could announce it on SmackDown. I suppose do, the winners yeah. get a you know a match on Money Money in the Bank. They could do. They maybe maybe. I, I think I think the women's going to. We'll touch on that in a minute. But Munzi, is it going to be Yes Boy in a couple of weeks? Are we going to be chanting Yes Boy and they're going to have new tag team champions, or is it Kevin and Sammy's turn? To, what are you shaking your head for? I hate, I hate, you I hate, pretty, they're pretty dreadful, I call them, I, I just, <laughs> all right, they're heel, they're heels, I get it, and everyone hates them, but just, no, I just, they just them for me, um, I watched them in NXT, they were just as bad, they just got on my, got on my tits at blew in the NXT as well, but yeah, um, I hope Sammy and I, um, I can nearly say Michael Owen, Kevin Owens, um, so these soccer um, references, yeah. Um, but I hopefully they do beat them. But yeah, I could I could see why they're going to give them a run because everyone everyone hates them, don't they? Like right. he'll So yeah, I could see why they give them a run. 
But um, I'm not. I'm not. Same with the brawling brutes. They're over, but I'm not really into them either. But I was a not bit annoyed. Not into the brawling brutes. No, 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 I just don't get it. No, just not into them. Um, but I get it. They're over, so yeah, you have to keep going with it. Um, and the uh, yeah, they, as you say, they've done the dirty on the street profits and yep. hit road. I, I I might as well be in there instead of hit road. Do you know what I mean? You could be the top dollar. I could be top dollar. Top dollar. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's move on sharpishly. Um, there had a couple of backstage skits. We won't get into them because it's just going to boil into what we're going to talk about uh, at the end. But the next match was um, EO Sky, Selena Vega. Uh, two of them that have already qualified into my inner bank. Uh, so I didn't really get the point of this. No. Um, yeah, I, I, literally, um, is really what I can say because it really wouldn't. It was what I think I said this before with a Seth Rollins match. It was a cup of coffee and you're finished, wasn't it? It was really, you know, say about it. It was just a waste of time. It, it, they, it, they shouldn't have been. Shouldn't have been on. Obviously, when someone's got to lose going into a big pay per view event like that, mm -hmm. it's just unnecessary. There was no yeah. need for that. I think this one was just really because Bailey distracted the ref when EO had the match won and then yeah. rolled over and Selena won it. So they're teasing this. And then they she uh, accepted Bailey's match backstage. Yeah, so backstage, we'll get into that now while we're talking about this. Uh, so EO Sky accepted a match that uh, for Bailey next week against Shotzi. Um, and the winner, if Bailey loses this match, she loses her spot. So are we, Andy, are we safe to say at this point that Bailey's losing her spot next week? Yeah, yeah. I mean, why would you make that match? Otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they've got plans for Bailey to do something else. I don't know what, um, but I don't get why you'd make that match. Otherwise, um, I hope she doesn't because I want to see Bailey in the match. Yeah, um, yeah unless Bailey can't come on the tour now. Unless Bailey, reason. for whatever reason, can't come over to, yeah, yeah. you know, she can't come over to the UK. Yeah. Maybe there's something going on outside of wrestling that obviously we don't know about that she's not able to travel. That's the only, I'm with Dave on that, it's the only thing I can think of that they need to get her off the tour. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Coming up now is one of your biggest, one of your favourites, Andy. It's Grayson Waller. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, Grayson Waller. Right. The Grayson Waller effect. Uh, now, just, just so you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you even more happier, Andy. Um, Grayson Waller is a slow build that WWE are doing for him to be a top, top star in the WWE. So he's a star. He's a star. So just so you know and, and get into that. Anyway, uh, Charlotte Flair was on it. Uh, oh, I'm not even, well, you know what I feel about Charlotte Flair. So Bianca Belair comes out. Uh, the goat, the goat. Bianca, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte's the goat, isn't she? Yeah, uh, anyway, Bianca comes out, throws a little bit of shade uh, at Charlotte, saying that basically I only need, to, I only, I only need this title once to do what you've done 14 times. Um, for me, this is what I was going to say. Um, obviously, in the uh, London show, we've got Charlotte versus uh, Asuka for the uh, Women's Championship. My prediction is Bianca interferes and it becomes a triple threat at Money in the Bank. Dave, do you see that happening? And if so... Who walks out of Money in the Bank, the champion, or do they get cashed in on straight after that match? Ooh, I don't think there'll be cash ins. Um, what? No, I don't think there'll be cash ins on the night. I, I think I think it would be a triple threat. That makes absolute sense with what they're doing. So I'm, I'm yeah, that's going to happen. I'd have thought, but I still think Asuka's going to hold on to the title. That's fair. That is a fair. She seems really kind of strong and over at the minute. She's got that momentum back that she had and she lost and she had and she lost. She seemed really in a good place at the minute um, and, and super over with, with the crowd. And I think it'd be a real shame if they took the title off her at this point. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I don't, yeah, maybe, maybe we are expecting too much out of this uh, too soon. But look, we're going to Money in the Bank because we want to cash in, right? So, yes, your answer would have been, yes, guys, you're going to get a cash in. You didn't have yeah. to. Now, it comes into those. I might be there yet. Well, well we're there. Look. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, but it does come into those new rules where they don't have to cash in on the world champion. I know the women will because there's only that or the tag team titles, which are going to be unified next week. But the men don't. And as long as the Intercontinental Champion's there, Gunter and the United States Champion's there, Austin Fury, it, it brings up any title that can basically go. And, I, and we had this conversation last week that I hope it doesn't go that way because I, I don't I want it to be world champions, and I have a mm. I have a I have an out I have a theory that won't happen, but I'll explain at the end why it would be it'd be interesting if it did. Anyway, 
<clears throat> moving, moving on. Uh, Harry and Cross, Scarlet Styles, and Me Chin. Um, <laughs> look, I, I like Harry and Cross. I love the presentation. I love the entrance. I think he's far better than what he's being portrayed as at the minute. You read our Twitter, you all know that I'm a big fan. He likes everything I say. I've come up with his finishing name that he likes as well for his impressive new finisher. I called it the Fallen Prey, which was he liked. So I'm happy with that. But Muns, is this a case of another two, even four, if you count the women? I mean, Scarlett, we haven't seen enough of wrestling-wise. But is this just another case of these guys, they just don't know what to do with them at the minute? Yeah, I think so. It was, it was really good in NXT. Um, the way they had Karen Cross come out and all that stuff. Basically, he was beating the hell out of people and winning championships. But, yeah, they don't seem to know what to do with him on the main roster. And then AJ Styles seems to have gone the other way. Seems to be the whole OC has gone completely the other way, doesn't it? And, mm. well, my, my, Mia Yim or whatever her name is now. Chin. Just get rid of her in general. <laughs> Mia Yim. <laughs> Mia Yim. Mia Yim. Yeah, just, Brilliant. That's just get problem. rid of her. And, just get rid of her completely. I, I don't know, rate her at all. You're um, the SmackDown shorts this week are all yours, literally. Well, uh, I was going to say, you, you didn't come to me with a Charlotte Flair. Do you know what I mean? Charlotte Flair's had more blooming title shots than Katie Price has had bloody boyfriends. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we got a Katie Price. There we go. We got there you one. go. There you go. Yeah. And Grayson Waller. Well, I don't know what. I don't know why you hate Grayson Waller. He's brilliant. Grayson Waller's brilliant. We will see how it goes. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was going to say, Dave. But I meant you, Andy. Um, mm. We go back to Karrion Cross and, and this whole thing. He got released and he come back. And yep. there was a promo in NXT where Adam Cole absolutely buried him. And we said this the other month or two at WrestleMania about John Cena and Austin Theory when Cena literally just took him to bits mm -hmm. and we were saying about is that going to derail him did the adam cole promo derail carrying cross um to an extent it might have um but i just think he's being booked terribly i mean they're not doing it again it's another one they're not really doing much of him he has these five minute moments on smackdown where his entrance is great he, or, or he's doing a backstage skit he's very much old school like undertaker -y or mankind um, in the you know in the doldrums of the arena in the boiler room where he's cutting a promo. I mean the guy's really really good. He's a great wrestler by the way. I mean there's probably plenty of people out there that still if you didn't watch NXT and you didn't watch any of the independent stuff you haven't seen him wrestle really. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think he's getting again the the, the famous phrase getting lost in the shuffle. Um, Do you think I be... think he'd be better. I think he'd be better in AEW. Yeah. I, I certainly think that he probably regrets going back to the WWE. Obviously. Yeah. He thought Vince had gone and he, he was just going to be totally Triple H in his vision. And obviously it's not. So yeah, I think it'd be real shame. AEW or Impact would be perfect for yeah, yeah, someone Impact, like him. He was good at Impact. Yeah, yeah Impact. He, he was, was had a great run in Impact. Uh, with TNA when it was when he was, when he was there. It was, yeah, he I been... just think he's, he's, been, he's been lost, I think, in WWE. Like many, quite a lot. Are. And I found that I found that as a I found that as a theme at the minute in yeah. the WWE. They're, they're using people just for the sake of using them. Like you're Austin Theory, you might see him for like 10 minutes here and there. You know, Cross, you see him for 10 minutes here and there. You know, I think they've got to factor in like halfway through. You've got to factor in the crowd singing to someone's theme tune for 20 minutes. So that's why wrestlers aren't getting on <laughs> bloody shows. Because they're all standing there fucking doing this. Oh, hello. Run over. Sorry. Ran over, ran over. Do, do you think, um, sorry, do you think that uh, he should go for the be going against Gunter, Gunter in the uh, comment? Do you think that, no? Well, you can't effectively because they're on separate shows. Um, so one's a raw, one's a raw. Welcome yeah, to the you, SmackDown review, man. It was better, you, you, and you know how seriously WWE takes their drafts. Yeah, um, don't, don't get him yeah, started. I was gonna say, they don't take yeah, <laughs> don't get him started if you saw the raw review. Yeah, Dave, what was you, you going to say something just then? You, uh, Talking about Gunter, uh, not Gunter, Jesus, man. We're talking about um, <laughs> Harry and Cross. Cross. Yeah, I don't know if he's he, he, just asking if he'd ever been to Japan, like in New Japan, because you I know, think he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure he, he was a big star there, but yeah, it's just so, so wasted potential, as you say. He seems to have the whole package, but he's just not getting any storylines or any decent creative. And <clears throat> it's, been, it's been about, mm, yeah, no, it's just. Yeah, it's, it's it's a shame, really. I think he could go into so much more and be so much better than the, the position he's in at the minute. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to my favourite man of the week, L.A. Knight. And he's still my pick, 
even though he's losing every week to win money in the bank. Um, LA Knight, what are you shaking your head for, Dave? Because he lost again, and I don't oh, just feel oh, yeah. like I was just I was really pissed off to be honest. And I know there was a little bit after the match. I'll, I'll let you continue saying what happened, but yeah, I, I wasn't happy about him losing. Yeah, so Santos, uh, he took on Santos Escobar uh, in a match uh, again. Was that really they both qualified for money. Was it was it really necessary to have another wasted match on SmackDown? And another lot, and as Dave mentioned, another loss for LA Knight, albeit with a cheating aspect to it. Uh, Dave, go ahead. You were pissed off, so smack Dave. Lay the smack Dave on us about this. It just seems to me when when a when a star gets over organically with the crowd, and it's not really WWE's doing; it's more the talent's doing. They they kind of punish them in other ways. I mean, why would donor. you? Yeah, he, he build into a big pay per view. He's in he's in the main match, and then a week before he's losing. You, you shouldn't be doing that. And I know they're both in there. And as you say, there was hijinks at the end and he was che cheated to win. But it's still a loss, isn't it? It's still... You read the results of SmackDown. Um, Santos Escobar defeats LA Knight. You know, that's that's just what's going to stick out to people. And wins and losses really do matter. I know AEW, that's uh, one of their taglines. But it should do in all wrestling. Every promotion, not just WWE, everywhere. So if you're building up wrestlers to potentially win a briefcase to then get a world title shot they shouldn't be losing in the in the run into it the in thing, my opinion i think wwe are kind of now the ilk of okay we listen to the fans with daniel bryan do you remember when the yes yeah. movement started they listened to the fans here they're kind of like saying no we're in charge here you're not in charge you know we yeah. can all see how over la night is look when they were in saudi arabia a couple of weeks ago uh, the press comments the night before. Who was the most when Triple H come out? Who was the most over wrestler? LA, LA Knight. You know, they apparently I, I spoke to uh I think I was listening to the Ringside Report with Dave, uh Dave Simon, good friend of mine. And they were talking about they're even drowning in now the booze. Yeah. He is so over now that every time he comes out on a SmackDown or anything, they're doing anything with him. They feel uh, we know they filter in crowd a lot of crowd noise anyway, but apparently now because LA Knight, I think it's just WWE going. No, we're not ready to listen yeah. to you fans yet. We're not ready to push him where you want him to go. We've all right, we've done that in the past with Daniel Bryan when he was in the uh, the WWE and the whole Yes movement, and we saw how big that got leading up to a main event match at um, WrestleMania. I think that they're even being very clever and holding it back till Money in the Bank. He's going to win it, and the pop's going to be great, and we're all going to go mental. Or he's going to be another one, again, the famous phrase, not lost in the shuffle, but kind of built up. And then they've gone, actually, no, mate, we're not kind of ready for you yet to Just be where you think you should be. So relegated that's I, to yeah, mid-card media. I think he's going to be relegated to, like like you said, Adam, like what they did with Cardona. How over was that man, you know, at, to the point where it was like ridiculously over? And then WWE went, oh, Vince went, hang on a minute. No, my choice, not yours, the fans. So... I think the same's happening with LA Knight, and I think it could be the, to their detriment because I think they've got something there, and I think I'm with Dave. I think, I, I think they're completely fucking it up. Is this a case where it's because Roman's champion? It could and be. And we're going to get a Raw guy win it. It could be. <coughs> but you could stick it. You could somehow segue. You could get him in a few. I don't know. You'd, you'd move him. You could. I'd have him go up against Rollins. Yeah, I'd, I'd have him in. I'd have him in that mix. It is, uh, you're probably right. I think. I think they know how they want to uh, end the the Roman thing, which obviously we're going to get onto in a minute. And but if you ask yourself, can you really see one of the Usos being a world champion? No. Can you can you see Solo Sokoa? Maybe. Yeah. I think that's probably where they're going to go. So if you put that to the side and them boys to the side, who else is there? Yeah, unless he goes for a, a, a mid card title, like exactly. Him. Unless he cashes in on or Austin Theory, does or he something. go back to NXT? NXT, that's right. Like, yeah, does he cash in Camilla. on NXT and cash in? Yeah, Camella. Yeah. I mean, I hope not because NXT they're, again they're 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 on the up again. They're doing great things there, and I'm with you, Adam. I think it's it's got to be cashed in on a world champion. So I hope it's not Theory or Gunsar. Otherwise, that that kind of devalues it for me. Yeah. Just seems like they're happy to they just sabotage their own products at times and just yeah, like they get in their own way too much. And that's probably why we a little bit annoyed about pretty deadly because even if they were doing great things on NXT, they've been on SmackDown two minutes and mm. they're straight away they're into yeah. a position of strength and they're Sean Michaels was really high on them in NXT. Yeah. Um, what you're seeing now is Sean saying the hunter, hey, 
these boys are good. Yeah. yeah. Boom. And well, that's the... Bending his ear, yeah. What, what I was at was that he's funny, I just fucking hell, they're awful. Mm, but... He's, what, he's like, what I was saying, you know, forcing pretty deadly. As good as they are, and I'm sure, I'm sure they, that they are, but LA Knight has had this build and build and build, and instead of just running with it, they've just decided... No, actually, we're not gonna we're not gonna give you what you want, and I don't understand the thinking behind that unless they've got some big plan to do something with LA Knight. But the time is now to do it. He's over now. He's popular with the fans now. Mm-hmm. He might not be as hot in six months. You know, he's been losing. He's, yeah, been so, yeah. he's happened before. Finn Balor, look at him. He was over yeah. and over and over, and then obviously got the injury. And when he come back, yeah, he's, he's been uh, popular everywhere. He's gone though, LA Knight. Do you know what I mean, even when he was in Impact, NW, yeah. he wasn't in NWA long, but he got over there and then. But I have seen a report that Mark Henry, uh, Henry said that he should leave WWE to go yeah, AEW, whether that's good, whether that happen or not. But I think he give it, I think he'll give it end of the year and then see where he is. But you know, he's knocking on a bit, and he, um, he's forty, and he's forty, yeah. so he's not. A, yeah. you know, so, anyway, we'll much find much. out in two weeks whether Mister Nike cashes in or wins the briefcase. But we got to get to this beer, and we the end. My Ooh. Christ! Okay, so <laughs> here we go with the latest episode of Albert Square and the WWE and and the, and the Bloodline. Um, it was Jay's decision that should have been last week that we got. Uh, well, it didn't happen, did it? Because Jimmy inadvertently kicked him in the face. So this week it was decision. Roman Reigns plants a seed of doubt and says, you know, when we were when we were choosing the right hand man, there was one guy that didn't want you to do it, and it wasn't Mr. Paul Heyman. It was him. And he pointed at Jimmy. And he was like, Is that true, Walsh? Is that true? And they said, he said, Yep, yeah, it was it's true. And uh Jay said, Well, you know, I've been doing it with basically them, well, Mr. Prom King, Mr. So and so. I've been carrying your ass, blah, 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 blah. And then basically he went, you know what? You're out. And at this point, we're all thinking, oh, see ya. <laughs> bye, bye, Jimmy. And he walks up to him, faces off, and you think, what's going to happen here? And he goes, and I'm out too. And wallops Roman Reigns with a, with a super kick. Solo Sokoa charges. He gets another super kick done on him. Then they get a double super kick to knock him out of the ring. And what you see behind me is what happened when SmackDown went off the air. It has now since been confirmed, Andy, that the main event for Money in the Bank is the blood? I can't remember what they, the tagline they called it, but it was something to do with the bloodline. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy, this was another masterpiece. Civil War. Civil oh, War. mate. Civil it's... War. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Civil it was War. Uh, ah, incredible. Absolutely <laughs> incredible, mate. I mean, uh, please don't tell me I'm the only one that's watched the ending more than 100 oh, I've times. seen it on YouTube, loads. On YouTube, TikTok. Anytime I see it, I'm like, I, I watch it and I, I pop so hard for that like you say that was probably up there with the Sami Zayn pop when he hit the Roman with the chair at the Rumble for me it was up there The honestly just when you think this storyline can't get any better like we said at the start of the show they do this I, I, I'm i it's the best story ever it's better than the NWO it's better for me it's the best story wrestling has ever told in the history Ooh. of professional wrestling that is a it's, big inc- big. it's incredible as I said earlier I think it's at that stage it's at that stage now. It's yeah. got to be. You've got to. You, and, and and by the way, can I just the Roman Reigns sell of the second super kicks? Yes, yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, unreal. He is playing such a pivotal role in this. The guy, he's got to be in the question. He's got to be in the uh, in the question now of the greatest of all time. I've said one of them. I said that he was. He's yeah. got to be in there. He's got to be in the argument now. One of them when you're down the pub having a debate about you know when you're talking about the greatest ever. Well, you the way he that. sold the way he sold the the super kicks and the role he's played. In this storytelling, and you like you say, he's involved with the with the booking of it. He's involved backstage. The guy's a genius. The guy's a genius. I, I, and I can see more twist. I reckon this is going to WrestleMania and beyond. The twists and turns in this. I think at the I think the end of the Money in the Bank is going to be one of the best and most intriguing endings that we've ever seen. It's going to be interesting because I can't see where it's going now. That's the thing. And that's what's brilliant. Kind Solo, of, yeah. Solo's going to come into it eventually. He's yeah. going to, I think he'll join his brothers. I don't know. How, I think they're going to long that out. That'll be the next one, the next turn. And then then you're kind of seeing it's going to be Roman on his own. Or do they somehow, they're going to long it out and we get the rock involved. I was going to, that was my next question. Rikishi yeah. involved. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That, that was my next question. Does it still end with Roman at some point, whether it be the, the rock? It's got to. Or maybe. It has to. 
this has to be one, the payoff. One with the great one, not the great mum, the great one. Dave, is it going to happen? Are we going to see The Rock and Roman ahead of the table match at maybe the Royal Rumble? Let's have the Royal Rumble, eh, Andy? <clears throat> You would have, you would have thought so. Uh, it's been speculated for a long time. Uh, a Rock Roman <laughs> match would be probably the biggest match you could book oh, in wrestling. Is yeah. So I, as a fan, I hope that happens. I hope it all makes sense. I know that, and any will because of the people that are telling the story. I hope it'll absolutely make sense. Interesting now what Roman does in terms of recruiting. You know, is there anybody else in the Annoy family? Oh, there is another. There is another it? one that's in wrestling at the minute. Yeah, and then it's 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 another two. It's two. Yeah. It's two, yeah. Do you know how they could segue the rock into it? His daughter's in NXT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they could call up the daughter, couldn't they? That that'd yeah. be yeah. it. He's in NXT doing good. They was always gonna and... say they was gonna have a female member because Naomi What was about there. Nia Jax? Could she be in it? Ooh, yeah, Nia Jax. Yeah. Is it Hikaleo in Come uh, back and let her botch the uh, botch the bloodline? Drops Roman on his head. I'm like, oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> Yeah, Hickelow. Uh, three years of, of, three family, years of storytelling yeah. down the toilet because fucking Nia Jax broke Roman Reigns' neck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie! And, yeah, it would be bad if she said my... As long as it doesn't break his hole, then uh, oh, wow. <laughs> it would be... Uh, do you remember that? My hole? That was yes, funny. I, I do. But uh, it, funny. It, this is the beauty of this, and this is the beauty of... Now we're at a point where we don't know. We kind of guessed that the Usos were going to... Yeah, We kind of guessed this was going to happen, just not in a, the fantastic way that it did. <laughs> But it's now, what do they do now? Mm. How well, does this go? Are we assuming that everything that Heyman said to Jay about Jimmy and Jimmy was kind of nodding his head, are we assuming that Jay knew all that, that Jimmy had told him all of that? I think so. Yeah. I think well, this is the beauty of it. We're asking the question. You know, do, do, are we assuming that? Is that what we're assuming? This is the straight beauty. away. When he hit him with a super kick, I wasn't 100% that he was with Jimmy. Or he just wasn't with Roman and the Bloodline. Mm. But it, yeah. obviously now they've announced the match and the way they left, it was clear the Usos were together. Mm. But initially when they hit that super kick, I thought, is there still dissension with Jimmy? Because Jimmy was saying, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, this is the beauty of this storyline, isn't it? Is that we don't know. And that's that's what this is what keeps us coming back for more and more. It's the best more. story ever. Well, there you go. You heard it here first, guys. Let us know what you think. But, guys, we are done. SmackDown was that, was it. We are done for the... I say we're done for the week. It's the next week, tomorrow. <laughs> We've got more. We've, We've got, got more. more coming up. But a slide line for anybody. You've seen the tweet today. You know, any of our English uh, chaps or followers that haven't ticket to <laughs> buckle up, you need to hurry up. We are looking Stick to break... Paper. Yeah, we are looking to break an attendance record for Ignite, and we are very, very close to doing so. So if you haven't got your ticket already, please go onto our socials, go onto the Eventbrite link and purchase the ticket. A, you'll help us do the record. B, there's going to be a surprise on the show. And C, the British talent on the show is probably the best that I've seen for many a year. Charles Crowley, Michael Oku, Scotty Rourke, Corey McRae, Smashing Mike, Connor Mills, just to name a few. And Tommy mm. Lawrence as well, one of the best best breakout stars coming up. But we got a busy week as well of guests. We will tell you where. We'll tell you when they're done, I think, would be the best <laughs> way. No <laughs> surprises, Dave. I think you guys probably agree. Some of the wrestlers that are on Buckle Up, they've got real big careers ahead of them. Yeah. We're going to be talking, when they're in a WWE Ring of Honor Impact in four or five years' time, maybe not even that long, we're going to be able to say that we saw them at a, a small, ve smallish venue for what they're going to be in in Bournemouth on July the twenty third. So you know, this isn't me just doing some kind of promo to come and see tickets. Honestly, these guys at Buckle Up July the twenty third are some of the best independent UK wrestlers around. So sixty tickets left, come and get one. Um, like you say, go on our socials at HTT Buckle on uh, Twitter. Come to the event; it's going to be incredible. Uh, that is a wrap for the week. We have got to do this all again next week with some guests, with reviews. Uh, Smack Day, we've got to talk to Gary on the Elite next Sunday, where he's coming on the Forbidden Door show to promote the collaboration with Honor the Elite that we start today. We were live on, I know this is going out the same day, so we were live on Facebook earlier, myself, and, well, you didn't have a gimmick. Oh, no, you was DMD at that point, wasn't you, Dave? You know, yeah, I was, I was in AW mode then. Andy's shaking his head. Anyway, guys, look, look that... 
from Adam Cousins, your co-host, from Andy Burrows, their host, from Smack Dave to the great man himself. Buckle down, stay safe, and we will see you again next week. Boom.